I went to school as a painter and found that I didn't have time to get the paintings out as I needed to have meetings. And so I started drawing because it was a little faster and I could dash them off pretty quickly and so I would have something to talk about in the meetings. I stuck with it. When I got out of school, I continued to draw. I have been using found images for most of the time. Occasionally I'll take a photo of my own, but for the most part I just search books and magazines and the internet for images and use fragments of those to create compositions. It's about kind of a scavenger hunt, looking for images that interest me and that somehow can relate to the other images in a way that is not explicit, that somehow I can make a connection in my mind or not, because I'm really interested in setting up this arena where the viewer is actually the, the one who is involved in producing meaning. That's where I am now, kind of. For the last 20 years, I've been finding these images, and the, and the subject matter of the images has changed significantly. And over time, I think I've become a little bit more interested in abstraction and taking these found images and deleting information from it so that then it becomes a more of a residue. It's a suggestion of what it once was, but is also something completely new. Somehow over the time, I became more refined with it, and so I started layering the, the graphite on the paper and burnishing it almost so that it became a little bit more deep, and the images then took on more of a resonance to me, I think. What I was going for initially, and I still am, is trying to neutralize the image so that it's not real expressionistic. I don't want to show a lot of marks. I'd rather have the marks drop out so that it's more photographic because to me then that allows the actual content of the piece to come forward. And it's not as self-conscious as it would be if I was making real gestural marks on the page. I do a lot of work in the computer. Once I've got the images that I want to use, I'll go into Photoshop and I'll manipulate them so that they become abstracted in various degrees. And so a lot of the work is done on the computer. It's sort of like a three-staged practice, which is the hunt and then the manipulation on the computer and then the rendering on the paper. When I started in the 90s, I was using photocopy machines, which was great because there are so many really lousy photocopiers out there that you can get some really beautiful, mistaken, dirty images from you know, this photocopy machine. And so I would draw, I would take the book, get the image and photocopy it, and then use that with the imperfections and draw. The drawing would contain all of those imperfections from the machine. It's, it's become harder to find photocopy machines except for at the library, and so I started using Photoshop more. This piece is a combination of these two images and it's what I was mentioning about the montage and the idea of layering these images on top of each other. I took a photograph of this celebrity who is covering her face because she doesn't want the paparazzi to take her photograph. And I juxtaposed that with this image of prisoners from an old archival photograph, linking them, but not really in any way that gives the viewer any kind of reason to understand why they're linked. But that's something that I find really satisfying in that it is so vague and the surface is so lush that the viewer really wants to look at it and try to decipher meaning from it, but it is also denying that in a way. In terms of how I engage with my practice as a whole, it can happen and does happen anywhere. I mean, it happens when I'm at the supermarket or, for example, I've found pieces of paper on the street that were just fragments of photographs and I've brought them back and used them as subject matter. And sometimes the oddest image will come to you, like visiting a friend and seeing a book on their bookshelf. and. You know, it's kind of you go through life encountering all these images, and so I'll take it where I can get it.
Loop is made possible in part by a cultural regional art grant from the Arkansas Arts Council, an agency of the Department of Arkansas Heritage.